Okay. Good afternoon, happy new year, and thank you for joining us for the February edition of QB Talks at Neighborhood Watch with Kelly and Kristen. My name is Gary Dehart, and I'm the publisher of Insightful Accountant and Tax Practice News. Thank you to our presenters, Kelly Gonzalez, Kristen ne and Kristen Nisaraldo, who I have to let in uh, in the room in just a minute. Once I'm done talking, we'll we'll get her in here, and uh, I'll have them introduce themselves in just a minute. Then we have a couple of other uh, special guests who will be popping in um, over the next hour or so. Before we get started, I do want to say thank you to our series sponsor, Rewind. Rewind Backups protects the critical data which runs your and your client's businesses. Online accounting software products don't automatically save your transactions and files if they're accidentally deleted. Rewind Backs Up is the undo button for your online accounting software, automatically saving and restoring the latest version of your books. Rewind Backups are available for QuickBooks Online, Shopify, Shopify Plus, GitHub, Trello, Microsoft 365, and BigCommerce with a dozen other platforms currently in beta. So before we dive in too far, I do want to go ahead and throw up a quick poll question, and this is for Rewind. It does have four parts, and while you do that, I'll... Uh, I'll keep talking about CPE and all those things. So this is a this is only counts as one question for CPE. And as um, you may already know, for 2023, we are now offering CPE for QB Talks. And so like any CPE course, you have to be here for 50 minutes, five zero minutes, and you have to participate in at least three of the polling questions. And just as a reminder, even though this has four parts, it's only one question. So we'll have some other questions that will pop up that you will need to, to participate in. So if you have any questions during the session, we ask you that you just put them in the questions panel. Kelly and Kristen will be monitoring that and we'll try to get to them um, throughout the presentation. We will send a link to the rec recording to you within about 24 hours. And that link um, will point you over to our YouTube channel, which is where all of our video assets sit. And then the slides will also be available in the chat. Actually, Kelly, we didn't talk about that before, but if you guys can drop that uh, slide deck into the chat once mm -hmm. we get started, that would be great. And then I'll draw, I'll pick a, pull a copy too, and then uh, we'll also send it to people afterwards. So that is all that I have. Kelly, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, and then I'll uh, let Kristen in, and we certainly appreciate the two of you being here. Thank you. Okie dokie. Um, Okay, there you go. So I wasn't sure about the poll. Hi guys, this is Kelly. Uh, so as Gary mentioned, we are here for QB Talks at Neighborhood Watch. Uh, today we decided to give you some apps to watch this year in 2023. Um, and we focused really on apps that were making uh, changes to their offerings or adding new product lines to their offerings um, or had something cool going on that we thought maybe you guys might wanna be made aware of. Uh, so. It's kind of a spin on the new apps, but it's more updating on the apps that maybe you already have heard of and don't realize that, you know, they've now added um, some new stuff. Uh, so as Gary mentioned, I'm Kelly Gonzalez. I have a bookkeeping firm based in New York City called Totally Booked. Uh, we specialize in QuickBooks Online, and I personally specialize in app integration and technology um, integration for my clients. Uh, and sometimes for other accountants and bookkeepers. So I help people with their processes and trying to find ways to do things a little easier. Um, my focus for my firm is e-commerce. And so a lot of times I get to test out apps in that space and then I am, you know, bring them all to you guys. Uh, so, and I'm actually gonna, oh, there's Kristen. Okay, so Kristen is in here. Kristen, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, you're on mute. There we Hi, go. Hi, my name is Kristen Nisaraldo, the one who perpetually has stuff explode every time I try and do this quarterly webinar. Um, I am a bookkeeper who specializes in independent restaurants and bars and loves apps and doing all the things around apps. And I feel so privileged to be able to do this with Kelly. Yeah. Quarterly. So I'm excited about this one. Looking forward to looking forward to apps in 2023. <laughs> that is a very good way to put it. Um, so Kristen and I started working together, I'm going to say about two years ago, uh, and we also get to now help apps um, 
kind of define their messaging, I would say, for accountants, and then also give them feedback on uh, different maybe features or uh, suggestions from the accounting community. So that's something I just wanted to put out there for anyone that's attending that may see one of these apps and either have a question or um, want to know maybe how to get in touch. If it's someone that we uh, we know or work with, we're always happy to pass on any feedback. Uh, so you can use the chat for that, or you can message one of us on social media or, um, yeah, social media. <laughs> so we're both on Twitter and LinkedIn and just always feel free to reach out. Um, I'm going to go to, I know that Gary mentioned that Rewind is our sponsor. Uh, and so I'm just going to touch on that a little bit for anyone that's not aware of what Rewind does. Uh, Rewind creates a backup of your um I'm going to say of your technology, right? So it's not just QuickBooks Online anymore that they work with. They do stuff like a backup of your Shopify store. Um, and so giving you kind of a point in time where you can take record of a file, so to speak, um, so that if you then make changes to it, or let's say you import something or make some mistakes and need to rewind back to that point in time, you're able to pull up that backup or that copy. Uh, so it's really helpful. I have found it really helpful for uh, different cleanup projects that I've done. Sometimes it's when you're training somebody new and you want to make sure that you are able to give them a safe space to work and not have to worry about uh, making some major changes to, um, like I said, a file of some sort. Uh, primarily in the accounting community, it's for QuickBooks, but I would say there are going to be other things that you might have to back up for your clients or for yourself or for your firm. Um, and they are really well known for this and they do a really good job of it. So that is our series sponsor. I wanted to put that out there. And then we can jump into the apps. Uh, so this year, I mean, this, this episode is about apps to watch, right? So we had come up with a list of apps and technologies that are doing things maybe a little differently than they did last year. Maybe they have a new offering, whatever the case is. We will go through, I think it's about six apps, right, Kristen? It's, um, well, we're highlighting four, but it depends on what your definition of apps is, which is, I think, what kind of sets these apps apart. They're really doing things that are sort of, some of them are really doing things that are kind of pushing the definition of apps, and it's kind of neat to see, so. True. Oh, Maybe we'll I take like a it. vote. How many of these are apps? <laughs> All right, so here's our watch list. We're gonna get into it. Uh, and like we said, we welcome questions. If it's something that we can answer about the app, we will. Um, if it is not, and it's something that needs a deeper dive, we can work offline to try and get that information for you. Okay. That's me on a balcony <laughs> with my, my little laptop. Uh, so first up, um, and I guess Chris will just alternate. So I will go over our sure. call box. Okay. So, Callbox has been around for a while, I would say. Uh, I want to say maybe as long as I've been doing this, so definitely at least uh, five to seven years. Um, and, oh, see, launched in 2015. Okay, eight years. And most, I would say most accountants look at them as a collections app. So what's different about them in 2023 and started more like in 2021, 22, they've added a new offering. So... To be fair, when I spoke to them about it, because I was curious, um, I was totally misunderstanding it. And so I'm going to explain it to you guys the way that they explained it so that it's something that I think will be easier to understand. <laughs> so they still have their collections offering where they kind of match make you to a collections agency um, at a discounted rate for anything that is you know, well past you, let's say over 90 days um, in receivables. What they've started to offer is a more proactive offering. So now, in addition to the collections part of their app, they have something called Assist, where they reach out to um, clients of your clients uh, so that they can call and just send reminders, kind of like, hey, we're calling from ABC Contracting Company. We see that you have five open invoices. We just wanted to check and see when we can expect payment on these. Or we just wanted to make sure that you got these invoices. Do you have any questions? Something along those lines. Um, so it's more of a, I'm gonna say back office offering where they're calling on behalf of your client. They're being proactive about it. And so with that process in place, they're increasing cash flow. A lot of times what they're seeing is it's usually smaller companies who 
send out a lot of invoices. So think a lot of professional services, law firms is a big one for them. Um, anyone in the professional space that is kind of going, 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 and doesn't always have time to then follow up on those invoices or make sure that they went through, whatever the case is, and then they're kind of waiting for the money to come in, this they've seen has made a huge difference in cash flow. So it's cutting down on receivables, it's being more proactive. And I mean, we don't usually discuss price here, but I will say that the rate for what they're, the rate that they're charging for what they're doing is far less and more beneficial, I will say, when you have more cash coming in. So it makes sense. It balances. The best way I can put it. The trouble not only that, that but oh, just oh. to say, not only that, but just to add, like, it's also, if you look at it as a rate versus hiring a person to do it for you, like an actual employee, it's very reasonable. Oh, absolutely. So it's replacing a person and the rate is super reasonable. Um, the other side of it, and what I struggled with from the accounting side was, is it me? Am I telling my clients, hey, we want you to try this service or we're calling on your behalf? And really what they kind of had to explain to me was it's more of a partnership situation. So you kind of vet the call box, you work with them, see you know what they have going on, introduce it to your client and say, hey, I found this great service. You have a lot of outstanding invoices every month. We want to see if we can help increase your cash flow. I recommend these guys to call on your invoices at this rate per month. It's not, I would say it's not masking your services. It's not you saying, hey, I'm your accountant and I'm going to start calling. And I think that's where a lot of the confusion was. It's more introducing them and forming that partnership because they do offer a great service and trusting in them to then call on your client's behalf. I'm to their clients. Uh, and I think that's where I was having, I was the most confused. Does that make sense, Chris? Okay, good. <laughs> um, so yeah, so in here, like we said, collections, I would say is their, their most known use case. Uh, but in this case, also now pre-collections, I'm gonna say receivables and really servicing um, the, before it gets too bad part. I would say when it's not 90 days, when you still have time to collect on it and also ironing out the kinks. Sometimes people get an invoice, they don't pay it because they have a question or they're not sure where to send something to, whatever that looks like. This is more of a customer service offering, I would say. Um, so the uncomfortable stuff comes off your plate, you're putting it onto their service, uh, provides professional AR, like we said, and then keeps that cash flow. I would say that's probably the biggest, biggest uh, advantage from this service. Okay, I'm going to Cinder next. Do you want me to take this one too? Because I use them all the time. Yeah, um, I want to make sure we have time for all of them though. So. Okay. Yes. All right. Sorry. I will. I will speed it up a little bit. No, they're uh, good. Okay. It's hard not okay. to talk about them for a long time. I mean, it's good new okay. stuff. So. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, oh, wait, so let's answer, there was a question in the chat about Callbox. Uh, so they do do a referral offering. So if you're offering, if you're referring them to your clients, part of their partner program would be that they have a referral for you as an accountant. Uh, and you can find out more on their website, which I will put in the chat for everybody. Um, the other one I am not able to answer, so I will leave that to Murph since he is in the chat. But answer live. Okay, so next up is Cinder. So Cinder is something I use every day in e-commerce. <laughs> uh, but the reason that I switched to them specifically this year or, or last year for all of my clients is because they started offering two different ways to sync into QuickBooks. So originally they had only a per transaction sync. So they would create a sales receipt, enter all of the expenses around that regarding um Stripe, PayPal, eBay, Amazon, Shopify, all of the majors, and then some. Uh, they have way too many for me to list. So I'm going to say definitely check their website for all of the integrations. Um, and they now offer, so their new offering, and this is why I said keep an eye on them, uh, is that they do daily sync. So they do a daily summary sync where they do a journal entry, essentially, for all of the um, sales and income from that day, the fees that are associated, um, anything that 
happened, let's say in that one day, so that you're not having to do a sales receipt for every single transaction. Uh, so in the past, we had to choose between two apps when this happened because some offered the um, the journal entry, the daily summary, some were offering per transaction where you could put in a sales receipt. Now you can just choose it at a client level. So you can come in here, set up your client, and you can also choose to change it. So let's say you're doing um, sales receipts and then you decide that it's too much and you want to go back to just the daily summary sync. You can then undo and redo and just go with the full post for the journal entry. Uh, so it's a to me, this is pretty game changing and it's now letting me put all of my clients in one place, which is nice. They do have an accountant dashboard. So when you log in, you can choose what client you want to work on. Um, and again, not having to go back and forth between apps has made a huge difference in my workflow. Uh, and I would say for anyone else out there using more than one to get this done, it's going to be pretty game changing for you as well. Because uh, you're not going to have to bounce between a lot of uh, different logins and keeping track of who's where. It just makes it so easy when you can go to the drop down and just choose what client you want to work on and you're done. Um, the other thing that I do really like about them, which isn't necessarily new, but I do want to put it out there, is that they have an undo button, <laughs> which is great. Uh, so I forget what it's called exactly, rollback. So there's a rollback option. So if you import, let's say, a bunch of um, transactions and you realize you made a mistake with the mapping or maybe there was something that you needed to change, you can pull them all back out of QuickBooks, fix whatever you need to fix, and then you can resync them over to QuickBooks. So that one is a, a major, I don't know, major feature for me, uh, especially when I'm doing cleanup or something and I'm realizing, oh, the client wanted to see it in you know, this specific income account and we had it going to sales of product income you can undo it fix it and then, you know, move it back over, which is nice. Um, another feature that they don't mention on here, I don't think, but I always mention it, is that they also have a rules set up, like a, I'm going to compare it to if this, then that, where you can set rules up for the different uh, ways that you want to see stuff in QuickBooks. So if it's, I've used it to set up um, sales tax rules, because I needed it to go into either a specific account or I needed the payments that were going out on sales tax to match to what um, Cinder was calculating, whatever that looks like. Uh, you can set up these special rules so that when things are syncing over, it follows these rules as it goes into your accounting system. So they do, this is usually a common question. They work with QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Desktop, and Xero. Um, the Daily summary, the new feature, I believe, is not yet available in Xero, uh, but it is available in QuickBooks Online for sure because I'm already using it. <laughs> uh, so did I miss anything on here? Because I was just going from memory on this slide, Chris. You're on mute. You're on mute again. Why? Why are there two places to unmute? I don't understand it. Um, no, I think you're good. Unlike me over here. Just awesome. Um, Keith asked if Cinder integrates with Amazon and is that FBA or Seller Central? Uh, kind of. So I would say both. So FBA is just a feature of Amazon where um, essentially where they hold your inventory and they they do integrate with Seller Central, which is where that is managed. So technically, yes, they they do both for what you're asking. Um, and then someone said, can I briefly compare Cinder and Bookkeep? I would say on the surface level, the biggest difference is that you can do both. Um, in Cinder, you can do both per transaction and you can do the daily summary. In Bookkeep, you're only doing that daily summary. So Bookkeep is creating journal entries once per day. In Cinder, you have the option of syncing as soon as a transaction comes in every time, or you can do the once per day sync at the end of the day. So I would say high level, that's the biggest difference right now. Um, and then those other things like the specialized rules and the roll and the rollback, which I believe will keep offers something similar, but I'm not 100% sure. So I hope Lisa that answered your question. Okay, and the other one is not for me. So I'm gonna go to Davo, which Kristen, you're going to take over on this one. Yep, I sure am. 
Davo is fantastic as a person that works with restaurants and bars um, and has clients who are often very, very, very busy and do not have time to do a lot of cash flow work and cash is constantly changing. It is a game changer to have an app that I can hook up to their POS and that will pull the sales tax they collect every day from their bank account. So when they do those crazy bank balance decision-making exercises, that no matter how many times I'm telling them not to do and tell them to call me, they do not. This is just a way to give, even though um, bookkeeping and making decisions by bank balance isn't a great habit, the fact of the matter is we all have busy clients and they're gonna do it sometimes, especially if they're in a very immediate business. Um, so having sales tax pile up, I know my clients, they have um, have 50 or $60,000 um, in sales tax due during the summer. So that's $60,000 they think they have that they don't. And no matter how many times they tell them, it doesn't matter. So not having that in the checking account is really great. And then not only that, they pull it, they file it for you. And if you are a lucky person who lives in a state that gives a discount for filing early or on time, they give you back the discount, which a lot of services do not. So it is fantastic. Please check it out. The price is so worth it. And we all know as accountants, sales tax is something we have to do, not necessarily something we're making money on. Um, this really streams like that streamlines that process. Let's experts be experts. Um, there are some restrictions on who can use it at this time, but if you have in-person retail or recreation or restaurants, bars of any kind, just something where the place where they're selling remains pretty much constant. So there's kind of one's um, sales tax code involved per EIN. It's a great solution. I encourage you to check it out. And the price point is amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. What I love about them is they're so easy. It's not, there's no complications. It's just like, I I was recently trying to show screenshots of it. And it's like, there's nothing to show. They just do it. The only thing they let you see is like, yes, we're doing it. Here's what we did. Like there's, it's so easy. Just please check it out if you deal with sales tax for restaurants or bars or retail. It's I was gonna say, or e commerce. Um, <laughs> And the reason they're kind of different is I think sometimes the, the thing in the past has been like, ooh, look at the fancy app. How many things does the fancy app do? And what this one is kind of different, and I think maybe it's something to watch. I think it's a trend we're going to see this year is being really good at something. And there's not a lot of bells and whistles because they're just really good at that thing. And what you like about them most is you never have to think about them. Rather than all the fanciness, it's like, wow, I even forgot that was working on my behalf. That's wonderful. Um, I know Cinder is like that. And frankly, the call box thing where someone else is collecting your AR is a lot like that too. So I think it's a, a trend we're going to see even this year. Um, as far as the next sort of bonus app that isn't an app, this is given to us by Lysio, but it's called The Grove. And it is a community, but is also a learning platform. It's hosted on Thinkific. Here's what I love about this. Doesn't integrate with your GL, has nothing to do with your clients necessarily, but have you ever had that thing where you wished you could pick someone's brain about how they are in particular using an app? Or have you ever been like me where you thought you had an idea, but you weren't sure and you didn't want to go public with it, but maybe you just want to put it up to the community for like some feedback, like a sanity check, like, am I crazy or is this actually a thing? It is a great place to connect with peers. Not only that, it is a great place to practice ideas. They have these little things that they call sparks. You can make a little tiny 15 minute mini course on something you're doing. And that can be shared with all your peers. So you get feedback. You get to share an idea, you get to share a process, you get to get feedback on a process, all those things. It's amazing. It's a great testing ground for ideas. I think that's the best way to describe it. 
And I think it's going to be something, you know, it's just starting out. They're still working out some kinks as far as communications and being able to collaborate. But I love the, the, the learning part. And I love that it is accountant driven and that anyone can participate as long as you're in the industry as an accountant or bookkeeper tax professional. So please check it out. The website is thegrove.thinkific.com. As of right now, I think they're switching to a Facebook-based um, mm -hmm. community for now, but we'll see where that goes in the year. But I expect great things. There's articles on there as well. Just chat. It's, it's pretty great. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of it. I think that that's the other place that things are going to be going this year is sort of giving people an opportunity to sew into the things that are being created. So giving people in our industry more of a platform to say what we actually need and provide feedback on what we actually do. And Eric in the chat said the Grove is great and he loves it. So. <laughs> Oh, and it's um, free. I, like, yeah. it's free. <laughs> I will say too, for anyone out there that is looking to um, kind of foray, foray into uh, uh, training or speaking, or you have something that you already do some training and speaking on, it's also a great platform for being able to post um, articles that you've written, blogs. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're interested in creating some content for them, they are open to hearing about it. So yeah. definitely reach out. Uh, they want to create. I'm not going to say a community for accountants. I think it's really the biggest part of the growth or the biggest takeaway for me has been the resources. Yes. So the, the learning, the education stuff, like all of that is uh, a huge benefit and it costs us as attendees or signing up, it costs nothing. I so want to make sure I, we get to all of these. Um, I was just going to say, we have to <laughs> likely launch a poll at this point. Uh, it's, Gary is like, we have poll questions. I'm like, okay. So Gary, do you want to um, launch another poll? There we go. When do you consider using new apps? When the client asks for them? When you find one that's interesting to you? First of the year, middle of the year, end of the year? Um, we'll give you a couple of minutes. As Gary mentioned, you have to answer, um, I believe it's three out of the four polling questions. So this is one out of the next three uh, and to get that CPE credit. Okay, so give that a couple of minutes. In a couple of minutes, couple of, a minute. <laughs> uh, for me, it's definitely when I find one of interest. <laughs> I would yeah, say, um, or a client need. Uh, I definitely yeah. do not have a set schedule. It's more kind of shiny uh, object thing that I'm like, oh, what is this? Although uh, I have to say I that I'm more likely to indulge those segues at certain times of the year. Fair, yes. Um, I have more. But if I time. encounter one at busy time of year, I'm just putting it on some secret list I have to look at next time I'm, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, here we go. Looks oh, like so a lot of people agree. Here are the same. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us feel the same. Self directed. <laughs> when we find something of interest or when the client is in need of something. So I would say I agree. Um, okay. So are we ready? Okay. So we know those were our new apps on the block or updated apps on the block, if you will. Um, and next up, I'm super excited. We have our over the fence chat with Niall Carter Gray. Um, and what so, we can do is stop halfway through to do another poll question because I want okay, to put all those in. And we have a special reminder from Murph. I want to make sure we get that in too. So maybe we'll yes. do that. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Um, okay. So my question is, are you launching the video or am I? Because No, I shared it with you on our thing. I know I'm looking for it, but I don't have it. I put oh, the link I'm like looking for it's in our Slack. Do you want me to do it? You got it? Um hold on, going there now. Sorry guys, technical difficulties, but I found it. When you have too many windows open on your screen, this is what happens. Okay, so I'm going to drag it over so everyone can see it. No one can see it yet, right? Mm -mm. So, 
Um, well, it's kind of hard to tell too. It has the same picture at the start. Oh, I see. Hold on. It says 30 seconds. The Grove. <laughs> so, someone just you know what? The that the Grove is. You know what? Go to the. <laughs> Let's have Murph, because I really want to make sure that everyone hears what Murph has to say. Oh, that's Murph, actually you, easy. Yeah. Murph, do you want to talk about what's coming up, what's renewing right now? And Kelly, we have a slide towards the end of the deck. Well, that's getting see ready. This, this one? Yeah. And the next one. I don't know if Murph heard us. He might not be there. Mm. Or is he on the oh. mute? That's okay. Uh, there. Can there. You hear me? Hey, sorry to see right. that on you. It's completely okay. unfair. <laughs> You're so, like, I thought I had to have a uh, sandwich. <laughs> You know, I wanted to uh, remind everybody that we have uh, nominations uh, going to close in two weeks, and two weeks sounds like a long time, but for those people who have sat around uh, for already uh, seven weeks, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, two weeks is not long off, and uh, we know that a lot of people have just done that, sit around for seven weeks, and <laughs> the funny part about it is, a lot of people have gone out and looked at the nomination form and just looked at it and closed it and for some reason not filled it out. Aww. And folks, uh, that's a silly thing to do. Uh, you know, too often people say, well, so-and-so is going to nominate me. And then at the end, end of nominations, they don't get nominated and they call and cry about the fact, well, so-and-so didn't nominate me. Can't I get in? And I'm going, no, uh, too late, uh, too bad. So sorry, so sad, um, you know. And this is our 10th year. And wow. there are two great things happening this year. We announced two uh, spectacular new awards uh, for those people who specialize in QBO Advanced, we're giving a new award. And those people who specialize in QuickBooks Enterprise, we're giving a new award. And, uh, you know, when we say you specialize in each of those, we mean you really do specialize in each of those. And we have a whole set of intensive criteria that's going to determine whether that really is your deal. Uh, but then we also went to the opposite extreme. We heard what people had said and that it was too difficult to get into these awards. And uh, we said, we need to open it up to more people. And so uh, we said, we're going to expand the up and comers and we're going to make it easier than ever for uh, people who are new to the pro advisor program uh, to to be able to get into these awards. And so if you're certified as a QuickBooks Pro Advisor, uh, that really is the uh, one qualifying criteria. Now, certainly we're gonna evaluate you just like we do, and you're gonna go through the process and fill out our application and tell us all about yourself and all of the bells and whistles of your practice, et cetera. But, <clears throat> you've got a greater potential of uh, being one of the, as many as 25 uh, unique up and comers this year uh, than uh, ever before. But it all begins with that nomination form. If you sit on your hands and you just wait around and you don't fill out that, uh, that nomination form, there's absolutely no way you can win. I can tell you that's that. Right. You're not ever going to. Of the people not, not ever, nominated do not win. That's right. You're not ever going to be included <laughs> if you don't get into the nomination process. And so you've got two weeks. That's all there is. Two weeks remaining. Uh, don't um, be. Don't be like. Don't be like the seventeen hundred and some odd people who've gone out there and looked at that form and said. Well, not today. I'm not doing it today. Uh, you know, uh, you need to be like uh, you need to be like 
you need to be like one of the 497 odd people who've gone ahead and at least uh, filled out the uh, nomination I form. And um, so, don't uh, sleep on, on nominating yourself. That's exactly what I was about to say. No, don't feel weird. Think you know, of it yeah. as an exercise in confidence. Even if yeah. you do not expect to win, nominate yourself just to like give yourself that boost to have to answer those questions about yourself. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it I is mean, not if you if you don't have the confidence to nominate yourself, how are you ever going to fill out our uh, application form and tell us all of the details? I don't. Um, I don't also, really understand. You guys really never show off the coolest part is that when you win, you get a really cool. I'm going to call this a trophy, but plaque thing for your office, and it's really pretty. Um, and it's a conversation starter with my clients because I usually leave it like in the background, just right behind me. Um, but don't feel weird about nominating yourself. Uh, it is it is totally normal. And if you know someone that you think is doing great things in this space, obviously nominate them as well. Uh, every year I say that we, you know, everyone wants to see the list shake up a little bit, put some different people on it, um, maybe bring in some people that we've never encountered, right? So there could be people out there doing great things that we don't know about. Uh, so share it, you know, share their stuff, share yourself, <laughs> nominate yourself, nominate them. That's the only way the list is going to change. The only way the list is going to grow. Um, and yeah, I think that just reiterates everything that Murph was saying. Thanks so much, Murph, for the heads up. It's so easy to forget and think, oh, I'm going to, I have to put it on my to-do list. I got to do that later after tax season. Right. And then like in June, you're like, oh, I forgot. So here you know? you've got here you've got folks uh, Two weeks. uh three links uh a link to tell you more about the uh, uh and i general answered awards one of the questions and, uh, with the links. and the uh up and comer awards and then the actual uh link to the nomination form and uh, i hope to see your name on the list yes I love it. Thank, um, thank you all for giving me uh, a oh, few moments. Of course. You, are you kidding? <laughs> it's a privilege. Um, I did answer, when it, somebody had asked for the link in the chat in the Q&A. So if you go to the questions, you'll see that I posted the link there for anyone that needs it. And clickable, you could do it right now while you're also listening yeah. to the awesome interview that we did. Perfect thing to do. If you're nervous about it, give yourself the time limit. Yes. You've got the 20 minutes, this interview is going to take, which we have to rush, rush, rush. Yes. But we got it. All right. So I'm going to hit play. Yep. So people have heard me say this as many times as I do. Just checking. Can you hear the audio? Okay. I am Niall Carter Gray, owner and founder of First Step Accounting, where we make accounting a little less taxing for small business owners all across the U.S. Uh, and I have to say this, it is trademark. Please don't use it. My lawyers will come after that movie. It's my signature. It is um, what we strive to do in the firm. We do offer accounting as well as uh, tax help. Virtual, oh, even though I have a physical location that, you know, I just work better in a space that's beautiful. Um, Did I hear you tell a story about how you were charging people to do their tax returns in high school? Was that you? Yes, that was totally okay. me. <laughs> so I got into taxes um, because my very first job, I discovered that I could get my tax money back. I would go to the library. Back then, we had to go to the library to get tax forms. Um, and so I probably got about maybe $100 back that year. And I was like, oh, I, if, if all my friends are working, they're working. I can charge them $25 and do their tax returns um, and get them some little bit of money back. And so that's what I did. That's how we started. And that was uh, almost 30 years ago now. <laughs> I feel like the rules keep changing for you guys. Like I don't have to do tax, Kristen doesn't, but the rules keep changing. Like we get to do the books and kind of pass them over, but puts a lot more pressure on how or if everything is going to be correct. Absolutely. So tax laws, but you know, you kind of, if you go into tax, you know, tax laws <laughs> change just about every year. But, you know, as a professional, one of the things that helps keep me on the toes is not trying to learn all the things. It's really kind of zooming in on who we serve, learn those things and those things really well. And then also surrounding myself with people who are smart and smarter than me 
who also are learning all these same things. Yes, I always say that's the best part about um, networking and, and finding people in the space that I do not see any of my peers as competition ever. It's more, hey, you know this thing, I know that thing. We may know some of the same things, but I'd rather have an arsenal, so to speak, of professionals I can refer to than be in my own little box. <laughs> exactly. Dare I say, leave your desk, and go to a conference for, you know, the niche that you're trying to attract and set up a table and answer questions. Like, you know, those type of things, it's like, just do one thing different. Even if you're going to do everything else the same, experiment with one thing. I'm always a big fan of that. Well, if you're wearing the same thing or eating the same thing every day, ostensibly you're doing that to save your, it's what I call decision juice, you know, like for something. So if you're doing all this work in advance and, and narrowing down your choices so that everything can be streamlined, you might as well like actually think about how you want to use all that energy you're saving. Part of it is with tax, the software is way behind the curve. Like if we look mm. at the IRS software, mm -hmm. oh. we still have the fax documents yeah. in, right? Um, it wasn't until the pandemic that they were like, okay, we're going to try this online portal. It's like, oh my gosh, this portal's been in existence forever. Why are you just <laughs> now using it? So it's like the technology for tax just isn't as advanced as the accounting space. So when it comes to taxes, the other side of it is it's just not me using it. I have to get my clients to use it. And they're like, what do I need to use this technology for? I just want my taxes done. So they don't understand that because, you know, data is now readily available on your phone or through email um, and that we need to use a few different tools in order to make sure that their data is secure. True. So, and you know, when you're a smaller firm and you don't have an IT department and you have a couple of people working for you and they may be contractors, you're not necessarily checking their system software. And there's no one place to say, here's a checklist of things you need to make sure that you have on your computer. So, you know, I was like, okay, we have to create some kind of something that leans into, you want to go cloud-based, here's the bare minimum that you need to know. Um, and then think about it now that you're cloud-based, how can we expand your thoughts to be like, oh, I can do way more because now I don't, I'm not chained to a desk. I have this mini supercomputer called a smartphone in my hand. I can do several different things. Yeah. What so, I love about taking your firm virtual too is that when else was pivoting to you know, um, hey, we got to have our virtual summit now. And here you are. You're like, no, that's I'm. That's what we're doing on purpose. This yeah. is our thing. But what better way to learn and feel confident asking questions than in a place where you're not necessarily sitting next to everyone? Um, yeah. And just the variety of people you can reach, you know, the, the, it being accessible to people who can't leave their office for, a day, let alone a, a, a weekend. It's just really great. It was so needed in our community. <laughs> I actually love that event because now um, when I'm creating it, I get to work with people who normally wouldn't apply to speak anywhere else, right? Mm -hmm. So they get to be highlighted. And it's like, oh, who's this person? I don't know them, right? It's, I get to mix the QBO and zero people together. I get to mix um, different softwares that you may not even heard of before. So, you know, y'all know I love me some Cognito forms. So when they, I was like, y'all want a sponsor? They were like, yes. I was like, ah, I'm so excited. But they're not an account app. They are a forms builder online that I found in my research that I fell in love with. So, you know, I think it's really cool when I get to find these tools and introduce them to the accounting community because we're special, right? Yeah. Um, but I know that there are tools out there that are not accounting specific that we can use. So I also like kind of merging those two worlds. Right. It's like, so going back to what you were saying, Naya, um, <laughs> when you go to look for apps, or I feel like some have also fallen into your lap, but on your newsletters, things that come into your inbox, I'm going to say at conferences, I know you've spoken about stuff that one doesn't necessarily always apply just to the accounting industry, but then stuff that you've kind of just discovered that was probably not what maybe other people would even give a second look to. So do you want to tell us about some of those things? 
Ooh, fun. Uh, like, I know I you have this email app and app. phone apps and like she has all these. Ash didn't know you needed. Right. Yeah. Apps you didn't know you need. You know, one app I can talk about that we were that we're still extensively researching. Mm -hmm. Email. So we have a shared email inbox. And being able to collaborate with other people using that inbox, it's like, why is this so difficult? Like you don't want to give them the password, but you want them to be able to access the email. So we were looking for different tools that would allow us to be able to do that. Finally found one that was affordable because that's the other piece of it. Missive is this app that allows us to share that inbox. We get to comment on the actual email so we can, you know, she can ask me questions about this specific email. We get to look and see, oh, did this person email before? We get to see the history. I get to, um, you know, tag it, flag it, delete it, close it, all the things. And the price so, point was affordable. It's so you can have a side conversation about an email without mm -hmm. forwarding it a million times. Exactly. <laughs> and see, you you understand my pain point. This is, it was, a, it's a big pain point because okay. one, I'm trying to teach her how to respond to emails, what, you know, so that she understands mm -hmm. The, if somebody asks this question, send them this link or here's a resource. Two, I'm also trying to highlight what's important to me because I might get an inquiry from an app partner and she might be like, no, mm -hmm. but it might be an app partner. I'm like, no, I'm excited to work with them. That's really what about your scheduler? I feel like you have a full cool scheduler too. Scheduler, we use Never. Look Like a Boss, which is not a accounting app. And it's it's the funniest name, book like a boss. And the guy who, who owns it, he is the founder. He's from New York. Like you can hear the New York accent, like, book like a boss. Um, but that app, I found it on AppSumo. So y'all know, I love me some AppSumo. I love me a lifetime deal because we over here building yeah. the time on a budget. I'm, I keep trying to tell people I know who I'm serving. I'm serving hustlepreneurs. They're going from full-time employment to full-time entrepreneurship. They integrated with Zoom. I had my Zapier connection. I could build full-on product pages. I can do sessions, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes I sell um, training packages. Well, I don't want the person to schedule all three of them at one time. Schedule the one and then come back later. So Okay, I'm pausing this so that Gary can launch another poll question. I want to make sure that everyone gets their CPE today. Gary, there we go. How do you find new apps? Uh, colleagues, internet search, websites like Insightful Accountant, uh, client recommendations, or sales reps that reach out to you, I would say, from the apps themselves. I feel like I use all of these things. <laughs> I don't know about you, Kristen, but I feel like I start to deep dive once I come across something at a conference or someone tells me, hey, you got to check this thing out. Or like Nayo's scheduler, I had heard her mention that, I think, on a podcast interview at some point. And so I went on, you know, down a rabbit hole about <laughs> different schedulers before I chose mine. Yes, that's me too, for sure. Right? For sure. I would say... Definitely a variety of ways that they come to us. Okay, so our number one, it looks like websites like Insightful Accountant, very nice. Uh, internet search and other colleagues. And then we have a little bit of sales reps in there. Okay, I like it. Um, Chris, I'm gonna press play again on the interview, if that's okay with you. Okay. It's like I could do so many. I can schedule webinars using software. So I was like, yeah. so for all you ad partners out there listening, oh, think I'm about sorry. the smaller firms who may not need all the features in the enterprise plan. Give them the ability to add it on. Even if I got a call through sales and say, look, we're doing this just for you. Make me feel special. Just know I am loyal. I will stick with you. I will stick by your side. Do you feel, we were recently talking about sort of apps to watch and then sort of not even just apps, but like segments of the apps um, market to watch. Do you have any feelings on that? What? So project management is like the, the hot ticket right now, right? Um, mm. So that is 
where a lot of people are focusing their energies. What's missing for me is um, like we've had we've seen a gap in payment platforms. So there's so many, they don't all do the same thing. Some do something great, some do something else great, and literally not one of them hits kind of all of the points. Yeah, pay, payments are all over the place. I agree with that one completely. Email is another one. As, it, like I wish somebody could solve the email problem of we need the email, but we don't need the email. It's like, you know, we need email, but clients don't want another app. So it's kind of like we have to solve this communication bubble. Um, that is, and, and, and accountants are really afraid to show their faces on camera. So it's like video is, is if we could use video in a better way to deliver content so that our clients really, they know who the heck is talking to them and they can trust the person on, whose voice it is and mm -hmm. vice versa. It's like when I meet with clients, if I'm doing a tax return and I don't know you, I need to kind of see who you are, right? And so I can say, oh, okay, if this is Bob Smith and he's supposed to be 67, 67 when I look at Bob Smith, he better look like he's 67. Well, well also there's close. a thing where you're talking and you can, they're mm -hmm. nodding, but you can see the huh go across their face real quick. Yeah. No, that's okay. But I need and to be able to see your face to know that you're like trying to fake it yeah. so you make it. Because I'll just tell you again, it's no big yeah. Or the other piece of that is really us accountants really understand our clients don't care about the numbers. Mm -hmm. All they want to know is, can we keep the lights on? And do I have enough money to retire at some point, right? It you know, I'm just like everybody else. How can we eliminate some of these apps? But I'm finding that there are apps where you kind of need to segment it out. And because this app does this thing really, really well, I don't need somebody else to do it mediocre just for yeah. the sake of saving $18 a month. I was so nice. I've managed to, I set up Lucio for my clients and that made a huge difference on the email communication there. And I know it's not for everyone, but it works for me. Um, but the other thing that I started using is called Sanebox, S-A-N-E box. And it has made a world of difference in prioritizing the emails that I need to get to versus the newsletters, the calendar invite, invite, you know, acceptances, the junk. Um, but just saying, like when I go in and it says, okay, I have a hundred emails, I can say, okay, that's a hundred emails that likely, at least likely need my attention. Because the more I teach it, the more it separates out. And so my inbox gets like smarter. It's, I think I paid less than a hundred dollars for the year. And I cannot say enough good things. Like, it's so impressive. And I'm a big fan of time blocking. So I, if I can visually see my calendar, I can say, okay, I can block out this time for this particular project. Um, and, you know, it's, I love my Pomodoro. People like multitasking. I try not to do that as much as possible. It's like, all right, I got 25 minutes. What can I get, get done between these two right. minutes? And that's what we do. That's what I do. Anyway, it works for me. So, you know, some people are like, no, I can't live by a calendar. I'm like, I don't know how you can I absolutely must. I even schedule my fun time. <laughs> Same. I schedule my nail appointments. I schedule everything like personal. Kristen literally knows where I am all the time. She just pulls up my calendar. Even if it's at night, weekends, like everything is on there. I can't not. I'll forget. And then I will just not show up to things. And But as far as me, I've realized about myself, because I'm just like this, that if I put something that I'm going to put that I'm going to do something on my calendar at eight o'clock. That's just for me, right? No one not, and no one else is dependent on it. That is a promise to myself that I will do that at any other time but eight o'clock that day. Okay, I'm pausing here for the um poll, the last poll question, and I'm also going to pull up the same box website because a couple of people have asked about it. Okay. So as we mentioned in the beginning, uh, Rewind is our series sponsor. So they are always curious to know if you want them to reach out to you. I would say this time of year is probably a really good time to back up your, your files. So it would probably be uh, beneficial, but answer the poll question. And if you are interested, they will reach out. And let's see what I'm seeing box for you guys.
absolute game changer. So sending that over on the Q&A for Sandbox. Let me just say something about Rewind real quick, y'all. Like, seriously, if you are messing around with new apps, as all of us like to do, they are the best thing going because it will protect you from yourself <laughs> and maybe make your own decision. It's amazing. Everyone who uses apps should have it without question. Okay, so since we only have about five minutes left and this is seven minutes left, Kristen, is there a spot that I should jump to so that we can end this properly? Or does everyone just want me to keep going? Okay, I'm gonna press play. Yeah, I would just say just jump to like 18. Here, there we go, okay and people can find you yeah but we always ask everyone that comes what is it that you wanted to be when you grew up what is it that you wanted to be when I was little when, kids. when I was little what I wanted to be when I grew up was a shopping lady and this is no lie so I'm a lady because my mom was shot and so I thought mm -hmm. that was a job she used to have a bunch of bags <laughs> so good I was like, this is what I want to be when I grow up. You get all this stuff and pretty stuff. And so, you know, I pretty much have turned into that. I am a, a shopping lady. But I also, as I got older, said I wanted to be a traveling salesperson. Um, <laughs> and so it's fun because I get to now travel for work to do all these accounting conferences and speak and teach and work a vendor booth and so basically I'm living my dream right yeah <laughs> but I, I love like that you become you, the shopping lady though. yeah I was like I love that you've become the thing but by way of a different um industry <laughs> right because shopping lady is just like what the heck are you shopping for all I knew is I wanted to be able to go and get some babes <laughs> now you can do all the things I love it I love it. So now you go places and shop for apps that you don't need on behalf of other people so that you can try them out and test them out and then become the selling lady that actually is able to sell this stuff legitimately. That's amazing. Like literally the first person we've asked that's actually semi doing what they want to do is okay. Yeah, and it's still yeah, the other you. people were like, uh, so I tried that route and then decided that it wasn't really for me. But that's what I wanted to do when I thought that's what I wanted to do. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's fair. You pivoted and clearly it's worked out for you. So that's good. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, for me, I pretty, I've pretty i been focused all my life. So it's like, this is what I, I want to do. Okay, we're going to do that. I totally <laughs> believe that. Like there's something that just makes total sense about that, about you. I mean, I believe it. We started this interview with you telling us the story of like doing other people's tax returns in high school. I mean, if anyone's going to be able to make that shopping gig, selling gig work, it's that person. I have to say before we go, that's what I admire so much about you is you were like, you know what? I could do a conference. You actually had the next thought, which is, you know what? I'm going to do a conference. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have the, I could do a conference better than this thought, or I could do X better than this thought, but not, sorry, not many people go to, and I'm going to do it. And then still fewer people to say, actually do it. And, and then still fewer it. people actually do it on an annual basis. Yeah. That is inspiring. Well, yeah. thank you. I can tell you it is um, I will say my network has made the event what it is. So, you know, I'm thankful for all of the people that I ask and they say yes, because that's the hardest part, right? And that's one thing I can say confidently to you about you is that you, your people, <laughs> you protect them, you keep them close. You have no problem standing up for what you believe in and who you believe in. And so it makes it so much easier to put trust and faith in you and work with you. Um, and I, I say this all the time, but I'm happy that I can call you a friend because you're pretty freaking awesome. You are awesome. And you know what else? <laughs> you can keep doing things for free without a lot of like compensation, yeah, except for you. strange kitchen merit that you'll receive in three to five business weeks. <laughs> um, thank you so much for agreeing to do this during yeah. one of the busiest times of year. Yeah. And for sharing all your insights and just cool behind the scenes like I don't know like 
you peek behind the curtain. Yeah, like just like get over yourself and choose an app and <laughs> take a first spin and then go on and choose another app. Like it's not, it doesn't have to be all that. I love. I, I love need to end of this recording so that whenever I'm feeling some kind of way, I'm being like, oh, Kristen and and Kelly will pour it into a system. I need this for the day. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have to do it. Definitely send you. We appreciate you too. Thank you so much for coming on. And good luck with your shopping and selling. You know? Oh, thank you. Let me, let me get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, Nayo. I love Nayo. Same so much. Okay. She's so, so great. I really encourage you guys now. will have um, a link to the full interview um sent out on our socials i really encourage you guys to listen to it she's amazing and she has a lot of insights not only on apps but even more importantly just kind of an approach to business that i feel is really unique and kind of bleeds down to how she goes about um choosing apps and what she's really looking for she really knows her audience and she really knows what she's trying to accomplish so it's worth okay. it's worth watching for sure um we are at time. I want to thank everybody so much for joining us again this quarter. Uh, as we always say, reach out to us on social. If you have any questions, reach out to Insightful Accountant. They also can get in touch. Uh, we are always happy to discuss any of the apps that we've mentioned, if we can help in any way. Um, and I believe that's it. I just want to say thank you yet again. Uh, Gary, do you have to announce or launch anything towards the end? No, I think we'll call it a wrap. Thank you both. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Kristen. And uh, and thank you, Mark, for popping in and, and giving a shout out on the top 100. One thing I would add is um, one of you mentioned uh, about the when you guys were talking about the Grove, they're always looking for content, as are we. So Insightful Account at Two is open, up, open to receiving content as well. So you could reach out to me. Easiest way is info at insightfulaccountant.com. And we'd be happy to talk to you about that. So thank you both. Thanks again. And we will see you very soon. Thanks, guys.